lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? It, I, I've had better weeks, <laughs> but you know. <laughs> had better had better days. <laughs> yeah. Um, moving yeah. on from that, um, you know, I, I saw yeah. you immediately picked out the uh, um, 1792, the Ridgemont Reserve tonight. Yeah. Hadn't had it in a while, and I saw it there. I was like, oh, I know where I'm going. Yeah, I had like, uh, I, I went to the um, ABC last week, I guess. And this is the first time I'd been able to walk around in an ABC store for a while. Yeah. Um, Did you have to take out a loan? <laughs> damn near. <laughs> I, I spent like 200 bucks. Yeah. Um, but I got a lot of things that I'd been looking for. Yeah. And it's, then... Uh, it's nice to have good stuff around. Yeah. And then I was... Um, and then I was visiting my dad in the hospital uh, earlier this week, and um, the hospital's over by the fancy. Oh, it's in Fairhope. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Fancy liquor store. So I stopped at the fancy liquor store on the way out and hey. um, bought myself uh, the uh, Plymouth Navy Strength gin. That's the only place ah. I can buy the Navy Strength yeah. around here. Hadn't made a drink with it yet, but I'm glad that I have it. But you, I, just, it's, it's, I, I it's feel much option. more assured that it is in the liquor cabinet. Absolutely. And so, <coughs> yep, there's that TB again. What? I do not have tiny bladder. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I do not. <laughs> I got references. Well, I thought that we could start by um, picking up on something that we mentioned uh, last last time. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I have the thing that I say all the time, particularly with economics, that if you want um, money out of politics, you got to get politics out of money. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I mentioned that that applies to lots of other things as well. And so um, it applies to business generally, right? So if you yeah. want if you want business out of politics, get politics out of business, et cetera. So, but yeah. I, I was thinking, um, so there was the, uh, there was a recent interview with, um, Mark Cuban, um, who's a big wig with the Dallas Mavericks, the NBA team, Dallas Mavericks. Yeah. And um, so it was with the uh, that um, cute blonde that used to be at Fox that left. Megan Gosh, what's Kelly. her name? There you go. Yeah. Megan Kelly. And um, and so she was pressing him about uh, the NBA China connection. And um, oh yeah, there's a lot of overlap there. Yeah, and why the NBA won't explicitly um, condemn China's human rights violations and so forth, you know, particularly with the uh, Uyghurs, um, the yeah. Uyghur Muslims that they have been putting in, um, what do they call them? Uh, Concentration camps? Well, that's what we call them. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, like, I, mean, I don't, know, I don't <laughs> yeah. know what the nice word for that is. But. Yeah, it, oh gosh, there's some, like, really, um, you know, kind of like a... Um, a, a term that they use like that's, person holding facility no, or something. No, no, no. It's, it, it ends in camps also, but it's like, uh, uh, you know, oh, re-education camps, re-education camps. Oh, there you go. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a, or was Orwellian. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah <right>? absolutely. <laughs> um, and it, I mean, it is kind of what they're trying to do. Let's, let me, let me beat your culture out of you. And, um, <laughs> you will believe what we tell you to believe <laughs> and, and enter my culture instead, or, yeah. you know, the Chinese communist party culture instead. Um, but anyway, so he ended up getting, getting mad about it and he probably should have just left the interview. I mean, I, I suspect that it was one of those things where he was not, he was, what he was told the interview was going to be about was not what it turned out to be about. <laughs> yeah, and, he got blindsided. Yeah, at some point, you you can't just sit there and be berated. Yeah. Or I wouldn't, anyway. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I'll be like, look, I've been misled about what this was about, and I'm I'm leaving now. Yeah. And take off the microphone and get up <laughs> and, and walk go. away. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Um, which he probably should have done. And, and the truth is, he might end up in more trouble because he did... Um, after being pressed really hard by her, actually, uh, you know, explicitly condemned the human rights violations by the Chinese. So, oh yes, <laughs> so some of that money may be in jeopardy. Yeah, then don't know how that's going to work out in the long run. Because I was yeah. thinking back to um, the uh, uh, Daryl Morey or Morey, I don't know how to say his name, um, the Rockets general manager a while back, and I think we mentioned this briefly on the show. We did. Um, who had. Uh, 
because we were talking about Hong Kong. We were talking yeah. about Hong Kong a lot at that exactly. time. Exactly, that was um, the thing. And uh, he had made some tweet that just kind of uh, said, you know, um, stand up for freedom, uh, you know, stand up for Hong Kong or something like that. I can't remember yeah. exactly what the tweet it, was. It wasn't it was, anything controversial, at least not to us. But yeah, it, I guess if you're on the Chinese side against Hong Kong, it was controversial to them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And they put a lot of money into the NBA. Yeah. This is the politics and business. Yeah. All right. The, so the Chinese Communist Party um, it funds the NBA to a great degree because yeah. um, the, uh, the Chinese love basketball, apparently. Yeah. Um, Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but like uh, you were going I, yeah, somewhere with that. I, I was. I was going to say something racist, but I decided against it. Um, this time. <laughs> this time. Uh, it wasn't funny enough to make it worth it. You know? <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, anyway, um, then the but the the league came down on him. Oh yeah. And uh, and he was forced to make a public apology about it and and all kinds of stuff. And um, I pretty sure I didn't mention this on the show. Uh, it was maybe a month or so later, um, Greg Popovich, who is the president and longtime coach. I don't know if he's still coaching, but he's, he's definitely still, uh, or at this point, the president of the San Antonio Spurs. Yeah. Um, and he had an interview in which he was extremely critical of Donald Trump. Okay, fine. But yeah. he goes on and calls the guy, you know, an absolute moron and, you know, so on and so forth. Yeah. Not a peep. Yeah. <laughs> and so I find it interesting, or I, you know, I still find it interesting. I found it interesting yeah. at the time that, um, presumably because of the, uh, Chinese communist party money flowing into the NBA, that they, the league came down on a guy who made not even a disparaging remark about China, but a, a <laughs> positive remark about Hong Kong, uh, fighting for their freedom. Yeah. And came down hard on this guy and forced him to make a public apology. Whereas the um, Greg Popovich says some, you know, really insulting things about the president of the United States, you know, <laughs> where their company exists. Yeah, nothing. And yeah, there's yeah. no kind of blowback from that at all. Yeah. And it makes you wonder if he had said something disparaging about Biden, how would they have reacted to that? Yeah. How well, would the he, league have reacted? I mean, would they have been mm -hmm. like... Oh, you've got to take this back, or you well, know. you wonder now, um, yeah. certainly, and that's you know, as as that's really all I had to say is just to point that out. Yeah, um, that you know this uh, this money from a political entity in this business in the U.S. makes it so that they are more likely to defend the party that is putting the money in than the government in their own country. Yeah, <laughs> um, and I just find that. This is kind of interesting. There's, yeah, there, yeah, there's definitely something to that. Yeah, yeah, um, and you know these agendas that are going on, mm -hmm. and the agenda in this case, of course, is just to make more money. Yeah, um, and China threatening to uh, to take the um, um, the uh, games off the air there and and so forth, and yeah. uh, I imagine they could lose a tremendous amount of merchandising oh, yeah. um, in China from from it being removed and so forth. So I'd be interested to see what the breakdown is of what the NBA makes in China versus the U S I don't know, but my understanding is that they make something like half a billion dollars from China. Really? Yeah. That's insane. <laughs> yeah. That's a tremendous amount of money. I, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure if that number is correct. That's a number that sticks in my head and I could have that wrong. I didn't, I, yeah. I didn't think that we would go that deep into yeah, it. So didn't, I didn't, didn't write pull it down. It, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the number that sticks in my head is that they, they get something like half a billion dollars. Well, I mean, it's clear, from it, China. it clearly has to be a lot for them to go to these links to appease China. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, it's gotta be a lot. Yeah. To so. the point of refusing to acknowledge that there's any kind of human rights violation. Yeah. Right. Um, and of course it's not like people are talking about the Uyghurs all over the place though. You know, I think yeah. they they came up on our podcast a year, year and a half ago. Like not long yeah. after we started doing this, we were talking we about talked that. About it, but yeah. um, this isn't like a popular. But it's not something that everybody knows about. Yeah, yeah. Th this isn't the cause celeb, right? Yeah, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Nobody really minds. Probably at yeah. least in this country, mostly because they're Muslims, and well. we've been taught to dislike Muslims because they're the enemy. 
well, in the majority of our wars. It's it's the same way with Yemen. I mean, nobody really talks about or knows about what's going on in Yemen, but mm-hmm. it's still happening. Yeah, you know? yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Mean, and it's the worst thing that we're involved in, probably. Oh, yeah. Um, right up until we successfully start a war with Iran. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, I mean, actually, that one's pretty terrible, too. We're, we're certainly, yeah. you know... I mean, we're uh, not helping things there now yeah, as things are. Yeah, we're effectively warring on the this, uh, this civilian is... population in, in uh, Iran um, through our sanctions. But we're um, absolutely warring on the civilian population in Yemen um, yeah. through our support of the, the Saudis. Yeah. Um, and that doesn't just mean we sell them equipment. We're also providing them targeting data and so forth so that they can destroy irrigation facilities and, and um, clean water plants and things like that. So, yeah. you know, we, yeah. we're we help, actively helping them actively destroy food and water production in that country. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Yeah. Um, but I didn't intend to talk about that tonight either. <laughs> <laughs> well, anytime I see an opportunity to mention Yemen, I always do. Yeah, and, because people do need to be aware that this is going on. That's yeah, absolutely true. So. Um, so, but along those same lines, uh, in terms of strange influences, um, we have the big story from the last week that's not... The big story is not um, Hunter Biden's and uh, Joe Biden's business connections. Yeah. Uh, in the Ukraine, it's actually that uh, Facebook and Twitter did their best to keep it from circulating. Yeah, that is that whole situation just blows my mind. Like they actually, from what I can tell, I'm not on Twitter, so I'm kind of outside looking mm-hmm. in here. But it sounds like they completely shut Twitter down, basically, to yeah. try to to try to stop this. Yeah, um, but I mean that might be the case. It might have just been. It may have just been a coincidence, but man, it seems like one hell of a coincidence. Well, they certainly shut down um, the White House press secretary Kaylee McEnany's account. They shut down yep. the New York Post account. Yeah, which right. is you know absolutely a uh, a news source that like a recognized news source. It's not, yeah. you know, I mean, Trump might call it fake news from time to time, but, um, <laughs> who doesn't he call fake news at one point or another? <laughs> yeah. Um, but it, it's certainly a, a you know, a, oh, so a legitimate a news, real source. news source. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, if I remember right, that's where Seymour Hirsch has written a lot of his articles. I, this is guys, yeah. a Pulitzer prize <laughs> running, winning journalist, right? Oh I mean, yeah. yeah. So anyway, um, and while I think that the the Biden business thing is interesting, I do think that it, it becoming the story that that Facebook shut it down and Twitter shut it down, yeah, is at least as big a story. Oh, it absolutely is. I mean, it's really the first time you've seen them go full spread, just out to kill something, and, yeah. and wipe it. Um, and and it's kind of scary. Um, and I don't. I don't really know what the right answer is here, especially as libertarians, but I know what's not the right answer, and that's getting the government involved. Yeah, more regulation isn't going to help them. No, out. this this all all you're doing is switching the power that be from the private corporation to the government. And the last thing we want is for any president to have that kind of power, power over the internet. Power over the internet. Yeah. Exactly. Power over the information. Yeah. Well, I think that the truth is that it doesn't actually shift power from the private sector to the government yeah. um, because the groups that write this legislation would be yeah. Twitter, Facebook, et cetera. That's, that's who writes the legislation well, on all this stuff. <coughs> and that's part of the reason that we make the argument over and over and over again that um, all legislation does is uh, raise the barrier to entry to any competition. Which is why, I mean, and you see it time and time again, Zuckerberg has been pleading with them to do legislation and to write legislation regulating them. Yeah. Please um, regulate me. Please I can afford regula- it. Yeah. Well, that's just it because he <laughs> knows once that kind of gives him a solid foothold in. Like mm-hmm. once there's actual, once they're actually regulating Facebook and Twitter in these places, they're not going anywhere at that point. Yeah. I mean, they're they're solid, and as it stands right now, I mean, I, I can't believe Facebook has lasted as long as it has. Mm-hmm. Um, I really, I really thought back when they first started banning, not banning, but um, doing like week long bans or like if you post something, they they ban your account for like a few days and whatever. What do you, yeah, yeah. Um, I really thought at that point that people were going to walk away. 
mm-hmm. that once they got once they got hit with one of these, they were going to be like, "Well, screw this! I don't. I was off here for three days, and I don't need it now." Yeah. And I thought you were going to see a lot of that, and I was really shocked to see people not start walking away then. Yeah. Instead, what you saw was people clutching their phone and delirium trimmings until they could get back on. Well, no. Well, <laughs> what they did was they just created different accounts. Um, I know people yeah. that that routinely get banned mm-hmm. that have three, four accounts. And that, you know, if one account gets banned, they just go to the other account. Yeah. Um, and it kind of, it, it still is astonishing to me that people want that, want to use that platform that much. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, the reason they want to use that platform is because that's where everybody's at. I mean, everybody's pretty well on Facebook, yeah. you know. Um, and, and for us to move off of that platform, it's going to take people moving to a different, it's going to take everybody moving to a different platform. And I don't really know what the catalyst will be for that, but it has happened. I mean, yeah. like you think of MySpace and these, pla- these, these, mm-hmm. we've, people have migrated before. Yeah. Well, uh, the, an increase in regulation kind of limits that possibility, uh, because you don't, um, see as much competition as many other, yeah. uh, businesses entering the same domain. Right. Yeah. Um, and, uh, what you want is to have, options. Yeah. Because then all it takes is, well, generally speaking, as businesses get larger, uh, they become less agile in yeah. terms of being able to shift for to you know new, new technology is, or yeah. whatever the new fad is or whatever it happens to be. Yeah. And smaller companies can just make those changes quicker. Yeah. And that's what gives them the edge in, in the long run. And then they become the big company that can't move as fast <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, and lose out to somebody else. And this so is, goes uh, the... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is, you know, part that's of the, the cycle. cycle. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the problem with uh, with increasing legislation is that the big companies don't face as much competition and you have to be big to survive because you got to be able to afford the costs of, of maintaining whatever the new yeah. regulations are. Um, well, and it is, it is hard to see people moving right now because mm-hmm. the, it seems to be any of these other platforms that are like truly freedom platforms. I can't mm-hmm. even think of an example, but there's quite a few of them yeah. um, that like they don't regulate speech at all. Yeah. There's mines and Gab yeah. or something like that. Something. Yeah. Um, but they're they're all all of these platforms. I've heard of this thing called Parlor since this whole thing has come up. Never yeah. heard of it before, but well, it just apparently tends, that's a place that people are going. Yeah. It, it seems to be though that they get they get classified as where well, that's where all the racists are at mm-hmm. because you've got to be racist if you want to say whatever you want to say. Yeah. Um. I mean that that really seems to be like the way the way it seems to go. Well, and there's there's good reason for that, right? So the uh, these primary platforms are social justice warrior platforms. Yeah. Yeah. Without, yeah. I mean, that's acceptable and and encouraged yeah. to some degree. Oh yeah. Um, there was uh, was it on Rogan's podcast, um, where they had uh Tim Pool and Jack Dorsey. Were they I think so. It? Yeah, that was Rogan. Yeah, and uh, you know something came up. I, I'm pretty sure it was in that podcast where something came up about um the uh, the progressive bias and um. So Dorsey was like, well, we don't have any progressive bias. And, yeah. and, uh, he said, well, but you, you'll ban people for misgendering somebody. Yeah. And they were like, well, yeah, I mean, well, that's, that's, that's hate speech. That's hate speech. <laughs> He's like, don't you see that that itself is yeah. a progressive bias? Exactly. <laughs> you know? Well, and that's, that's how, uh, and there's, they're not alone in this. But it's just kind of the nature of when you end up in kind of an echo chamber where you don't hear other opinions mm-hmm. and stuff, you don't realize that you're being biased towards one way or the other because yeah. you just, you don't see it anymore, you know? Yeah. So. Well, and it, you know, it's funny that you say that I was thinking about that just recently with a, a an argument that I got in online. <laughs> um, just a terrible place to get in an argument. Yeah. I, but, I avoid those at all costs. <laughs> I mean, I, I dropped out of it pretty quickly cause I was like, well, this is pointless. This is but, going nowhere. Yeah. Um, but you know, my thought was like, you have this group of people that, Everybody around them and their media sources and everything else, they all say the same thing. Yep. And these people believe that they, you know, that the any kind of other opinion is an extreme minority and just crazy people would believe that and that everybody thinks that the way that they do. Yeah. And then you start looking at numbers and you're like, well, no, but 
don't you see just from the pr- last presidential election that literally half of the country <laughs> disagrees disagrees with you yeah, <laughs> like exactly you, you don't have a monopoly on these <laughs> ideas there's plenty of them out there now yeah um and and that is certainly the case with these uh these platforms there is a support for the Democrats, and you can see it very plainly in this particular scenario. Oh, yeah. So um, we have some potentially damaging information about uh, you know, what B- Joe Biden knew about what Hunter Biden was doing, yeah. um, which he's repeatedly denied. And we may as well just like cover this. So I, I yeah. guess we'll start with, with what the story actually probably should be. Yeah. Um, at least <laughs> if all of this other th- stuff hadn't happened. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is that there has been a, a, a laptop, like a MacBook or something. I can't remember. Yeah. Um, all but, I've heard is laptops. So. Yeah. Um, that apparently belonged to Hunter Biden. Um, yeah. which I mean, from this, the way the story goes is that he like took it to some, uh, computer repair place dropped it off and I guess forgot about it or so, who knows, but abandoned <laughs> yeah. it anyway. Yeah. Um, and it was eventually turned over. And, as, you know, some background stories I hear say that the Justice Department had this like almost a year ago, Yeah. Um, this information. But anyway, <laughs> it made its way into the hands of Giuliani. And regardless of what you think of Giuliani, um, because, you know, the new story is that uh, this is just more Russian interference, that the Russians found a... Um, you know, a willing participant or a, uh, I, I don't remember what the term was, but it's essentially a mark yeah. that they could take advantage of. This guy w- wants this kind of information. So we're going to fake all this information and give it to uh, Rudy Giuliani and he'll <laughs> um, put it out in the public and, you know, it's all uh, made up. Well, yeah. Giuliani was a prosecutor for a long time. Like, and regardless <laughs> of what you think of him, he's pretty sharp. Oh yeah. Um, and so I don't think he's so easily fooled besides the fact yeah. that blaming Russia for everything is kind of old hat at this point. <laughs> yeah. I, like, you know. I mean, yeah. and there's some stuff, you know, some of the pictures that they put out there yeah. are like, well, are Hunter Biden's selfies. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, it would be hard. I, I mean, I guess you can fake all of this potentially, but, but they're not come. Nobody's coming out at least in the Biden camp and saying that any of the stuff is fake. That's true too. There's, there's been no denial from the Biden campaign or anybody associated that this mm-hmm. stuff isn't what it is. It's, it, I mean, they'll, they'll claim they'll make other claims, but they don't mm-hmm. actually deny it. That's true because then, you know, where are you when it gets proven to be true? Exactly. Yeah. Which is bound to happen. I think, I mean, I don't yeah. know. I mean, who knows mm-hmm. really, but right. you know, um, but I mean, it's of, of Hunter, uh, you know, uh, using drugs, which I don't have any particular problem with, yeah. um, engaged in explicit sexual acts. Again, I don't have any particular problem with it, except that there has also been some stories that, you know, yeah. there's some pedophilia or, and so no, forth. No, but who and, knows? None of, and none of that's been confirmed yet, no. but there's definitely a lot of noise out there about yeah. there possibly being some pedophilia involved. Yeah. Um, um I mean, who knows? We're going to pretend that that's not the case. So, well, I mean, we so don't none know of these, that it is the case. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and so we're going to assume that it's not. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, but so none of that is a, a particular problem, except that there are also emails on there um, from him and other officials at Burisma. Um, yeah. Well, that's really where the rubber hits the road. Like, so exactly. all of this other stuff just looks bad for Biden, mm-hmm. but the Burisma stuff, there's actual corrupt potential at least for mm-hmm. which, I mean, who doesn't really believe that there's not some kind of corruption yeah, there anyway? I mean, but our that's assumption all, the whole time has been that this was a pay for access yeah, yeah, uh, situation. Exactly. But it looks like now there may be some hard evidence of that. Yeah. And that's really what the game changer is. Because Biden has denied this. The, Joe Biden has denied yes. this the whole time. Said, I, my son and I didn't talk about his business dealings, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, he's very But there seems the to be, there's um, these emails here uh, appear to be I'm not going to say proof, but strong evidence yes. um, that uh, Joe Biden was in fact aware of this and that uh, Hunter used, um, or Burisma used the hiring of Hunter Biden in order to have access to Joe Biden yep. and that introductions were made, et cetera, et yeah, cetera. Exactly. And uh, if that turns out to be the case, then it just shows that Joe Biden is an absolute liar. Yeah. Like unquestionably, yeah, and yeah. that doesn't set him and apart particularly from any other presidential candidate, as far as uh, I'm concerned. But <laughs> well, it doesn't. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, it's it puts it very out there. But you know, it 
what it does is it shows that he uh, was involved in political corruption mm-hmm. when he was the vice president. And so therefore we could assume that he is going to be involved in political corruption if so, he is president. So that when he says that we're going to return to normalcy under his presidency, it's he's back right. to corrupt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah I'm, so I'm sure that Trump is corrupt. Too, oh, I'm but. sure he is too, but at the same time, <laughs> but you know, the, and this actually comes back around. Uh, okay. So, well, I, I do want to mention this first before we go on to the, to the social media issues with this yeah. um, is that so I, I've never, so we have a uh, an incumbent president who is running f- for um, the presidency again and this is a man who has been impeached yeah right like they they yeah. pressed impeachment against him um, but somehow throughout this campaign that hasn't came up at all Exactly. That is interesting that, yeah, that hasn't been an issue. And you would think it would be. Okay. It's not something I've considered. Well, here's something else for you to consider in that light. Yeah. (laughs) Is that what he was impeached for, essentially, is for pursuing an investigation into this particular issue (laughs) with Joe Biden. Yes, that's that's very that's there's a reason they're not mentioning this. So they're not talking about this now because all it does is it shines a light on the potential corruption of their presidential candidate. candidate. Yes, that is very interesting. Mm-hmm. Very very interesting. I mean, and in a lot of ways, the the whole impeachment thing, I think, it reminds me a lot of uh, John Kiriakou who mm-hmm. was the whistleblower, uh, the CIA whistleblower on the torture program. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. And the fact that John Kiriakou is the only person that served time for anything related to the torture program in the CIA. Yeah. And he served time for exposing it. For exposing it. Not for being involved in it. Yeah. And so now you have this president who is, uh, you know, in his quid pro quo, which, (laughs) you know, is questionable to begin with, um, was trying to presumably use his influence to get the Ukrainian president to um, look deeper into potential corruption of the previous VP. Yeah. Um, and he was impeached for that. His corruption was in trying to uh, influence somebody corruption. to, ex- yeah, yeah, to yeah, exactly. investigate corruption by the previous administration. Yeah. All right. And now they're not talking about it. Yeah. Oh, and it yeah. seems like if there was anything <laughs> real to this, um, that they would definitely use the fact that this guy's been impeached as yeah. uh, some, you know, a strike against him in his bid for another for re-election, yeah, <laughs> yeah another term in the White House. Yeah, All right. man, it, I'm kind of surprised Trump hasn't started playing that card. <laughs> yeah, well, he might not want to bring it up either. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, bring <laughs> it up. Probably not really good for anybody. Yeah, um, it's not. Yeah. But at the same time, I mean, it, you know. I don't know. It's interesting. <laughs> yeah. So um, back to the social media issues. Um, now there, uh, I get confused about all this stuff, and I, I just assume that in every major media corporation there are um, intelligence uh, employees. Yeah. There, like we know that the CIA or NSA or somebody has an office in Google, right? Oh. Yeah. Um, and. Do we know that about Facebook? I thought that that was the case for Facebook as well. I would well. imagine. I mean, I don't know that. Um, I mean, I don't know about Twitter, and I'm not certain about Facebook, but I, I just, just assume. I can't imagine that they don't, though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this is, you know, the the intelligence community is a big part of what has tried to prevent Trump from doing anything while oh, he yeah. is in, from taking office in the first place and from doing anything since he's been in office. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I just find it interesting that the issue that they had with this is that it, you know, it was stolen information, which that also isn't necessarily true, yeah. um, or that it was hacked or unproven or whatever. And, and there's a few issues about this, like, you know, talking about John Kiriakou, uh, what about um, uh, Chelsea Manning? Yeah. So Chelsea Manning exposed the, um, the diplomatic cables um, and the Afghan war logs um, Iraq and Afghan war logs and so forth. Well, that was hacked information. Does that mean that, that these, um, social media sites that are actually 
a, a big disseminator of of news generally for people now yeah. oh, wouldn't yeah. be able to publish that information and that you yeah. wouldn't be able to share it on those sites. I mean, I think that that's important things <laughs> in a republic to maintain. Um, you I, know, the, I absolutely do, but the powers that be would love nothing more than for that information not to be circulated. Right. So, I mean, that's, that's what they would want. Yeah, you're yeah. absolutely right about that. But so this policy, though, prevents like legitimate... Yeah. important leaks from being um, being exposed on their sites yeah. if they were to actually enforce this uh, fairly all around. Yeah. Um, now, of course, the New York Times, the Washington Post, uh, you know, all these major media outlets, um, they expose leaks all the time, but they're controlled leaks, yeah. right? They're the leaks that the intelligence agencies are giving them. It's information that they want out there well, in the public. And it's, it's like with the Steele dossier, like mm -hmm. all of that was completely unsubstantiated and no, there was no concerted effort to pull that yeah. and not, not have that out there. Right. And more importantly, recently yeah. is Trump's tax returns. Oh yeah. I didn't even think because that. Because that stuff was certainly exposed without permission. Yeah. Um, it would have to be, uh, you know, somebody related to his tax attorneys or, um, his accounting, yeah. um, that exposed it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, those people have an ethical responsibility to keep private their, um, their clients information. Oh yeah. Um, and so that information was released without permission as well. And they didn't make any effort to stop that information from traveling around. Yeah, exactly. But the difference here again is yeah. that they don't want Trump in office. Yeah. Orange man, bad. <laughs> and they're trying to protect Biden. Exactly. And so, um and and so the you know just the it makes you wonder like why <sighs> And this is from a whole group of people that are constantly talking about how important equality is. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that is true. Man, that's true. Mm -hmm. So I I just I don't know, man. Something's got to give with the social media sites though. And I don't know yeah. and, and I don't know what the right answer to that is. Like I've put a fair amount of thought into it. I don't know what other than I know you had mentioned at one point, maybe like if, if big names started leaving and going mm -hmm. somewhere else, like that's what it would take. Yeah. Um, if Trump went to another site other than Twitter. Oh yeah. I mean, that would do tens it. of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people would probably move would, would with follow him. him. Yeah. It, it, all the media would have to. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, so the ball's in your court. If you're listening, Trump, yeah. <laughs> it's time somebody to, send this to him. Yeah, it's time to switch <laughs> sites. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I think that it's actually to get the government out of the way. Um, yeah. To, you know, the other thing that comes up I, before we move on, because I, I, I kind of want to be done with this part too. But yeah. um, before we move on, uh, they did call, I don't remember, a couple of these sites into uh, to Congress. Recently, because um, I know they did a lot. I mean, it seems like yeah, they're, all, yeah, they're like, getting called in like constantly. Yeah, like, like this coming week, I think oh, some really? of these people are going to have to be oh, okay. uh, I in Congress again. That, yeah. And I suspect what they're going to talk about is the um, uh, Communications Decency Act, yeah. um, the Section 230, which is which is important, oh, actually. Yeah. Um, of course, you know, the, the Republicans are trying to change this, you know, like remove it. Um, I, I think that that's ill-advised. Yeah. Um, because what Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act is it protects these platforms from liability for user posted content. Yeah, that's the idea. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the idea with this with these sites anyway, is they're not actually publishers, they're platforms. Right. So they're not actually responsible for any thing that mm -hmm. somebody publish put, puts up there anyway. Yeah. But the question is, are they now exercising editorial discretion about what well, they see, I, allow and I what are, they don't? Which means they should be liable for anything at that point. Because because one at the point where you start taking stuff down... You Based be on ideology. Yeah. Well, uh, at least really? political ideology. Yeah. I mean, because it, it's reasonable that they're protected uh, to take down things that they that they consider to be obscene. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I, I'm not much on board with that either, but, yeah. uh, you know, I, I don't think that it's unfair well, to say, like, you know, we want our content to be um, generally acceptable to the public. Yeah. And so, therefore, like, if you're posting your um, Mardi Gras um, show me your pictures that maybe we are going to take those down. Yeah, yeah. 
we'll censor that. Well, and I mean, that's the whole idea behind having their, their terms of use or their, you know, is that, you know, they, they have that, which I know, um, all of these sites do have a terms of use thing that, Mm -hmm. you know, you, you, you agree to when you join. That is expanded and expanded and been reinterpreted, et cetera, et cetera. Well, yeah. And that note that is once again, one of these things, which is so long and huge, nobody could ever read and understand it. Yeah. It's just gibberish, you know? Um, so, but this does become a question. And I think that the answer is to get government out of the way. Yeah. Um, let the market decide. If you have a, a free and open market, then people will move to the platform that best suits what they want out of it. Yeah. Um, so if, if you want to see a bunch of boobs, then you'll move to whatever site doesn't have that nudity ban. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, and, uh, if you, um, if you are offended by curse words, then you'll go to the site that, uh, censors out profanity and <laughs> whatever it happens to be. Yeah. Um, but the the problem, as stated earlier, is that if you as the more you increase regulation, the more you decrease competition, and the more you make, um, the more uh, you solidify things the way they are. Yeah, you, you make these kind of monolithic type of industries. Yeah. Um, and so this past week, I've been dealing with it right <laughs> here with the healthcare industry. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, yeah. but since the Affordable Care Act uh, was enacted. Um, and we've mentioned this before too. Uh, we essentially only have, I mean, before there were like 20 something different, um, groups that owned medical facilities around this area. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, and since the affordable care act, we now have essentially two. Yeah. Uh, we have infirmary health and USA. Yeah. And infirmary just about owns everything. Yeah, like, it, I don't know how much USA has, but I know infirmary owns. Yeah, infirmary just, is like 80% of it. Yeah, you know, just like everything I've had to deal with has been through infirmary. And it's created a problem because there's no because there's no competition amongst these uh, places. They kind of get to dictate terms to you. Yeah. And, and not and it's so it sucks on your end or our end mm-hmm. with that, but it also sucks on the employment end. Yeah, because if that's you're true too. in the medical field and mm-hmm. you get something happens between you and infirmary, mm-hmm. you're screwed. Yeah, like I mean, <laughs> like you are. There's almost nowhere to go because even like the private doc, doc, like the mom and pop, like mm-hmm. small doctors, um, doctors offices, they're yeah. all gone. Infirmaries yeah. bought just about There's all of them. Very few independents left. Very few. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, my internal medicine guy is, is, um, is he still outside he's still, yeah, he's still independent, well, but it, it creates its own problems for him too, right? Cause he doesn't yeah. have any kind of authority in any of the hospitals around here. Yep. He has access to, uh, one or two hospitals, I guess. Yeah. Um, so that he can do, uh, he can perform procedures in those hospitals. Yeah. But like once you're in there, you're not really his patient. Yeah. Yeah, they've got the hospitalist as now yeah. this, this new term they use for the doctor in the hospital. Yeah, which is the guy who's just trying to find an excuse to open up your bed for somebody else. Yeah, get you bounce you somewhere else. Exactly. Yeah. Um, we we may do a longer podcast when I'm done dealing with this and I'm I'm really ready to vent. But yeah, um, it's 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 tough, man. I would like to move on to uh, the Brianna Taylor stuff. Oh yeah, I forgot we were going to talk about that. Yeah. So. Um, Mostly it's because I, I've heard a lot of people just kind of taking the wrong, well, from my perspective, taking the wrong approach on this. Yeah. So uh, they recently found um, no fault with the police in the Breonna Taylor killing, yeah. um, which there's a problem with that anyway. But uh, a lot of the talk has been, um, and just to familiarize people, if you're not a, somehow not aware, I mean, this happened back in March, but it became a big thing after uh, the George Floyd yeah. Uh, yeah. death. Yeah. Um, but uh, so what happened was um, the uh, police uh, were executing a warrant in search of a person that had been um, Breonna Taylor's boyfriend, her her yeah. previous boyfriend. Yeah. And they were looking for this guy at her apartment and they executed. By most accounts, a no knock raid at 1 a.m., yeah. um, kicked in the door of the apartment and uh, Breonna Taylor's current boyfriend um, who thought somebody was breaking in and assaulting their apartment, uh, shot, uh, you know, had a legally owned firearm and he shot at the people that broke into his apartment yeah. or their apartment. Yeah. Um, and then, which happened to be the police yeah. and the police unloaded and, um, <coughs> and didn't hit 
Kenneth Walker, I don't think. Actually, he may have been I injured. I think he was injured, but not killed. Yeah, but Breonna Taylor, uh, who was an EMT um, during this COVID thing, you know, a hero by all other respects. I don't yeah. buy into that either, but just to tell the but, story but the way, yeah, you yeah. know. The uh, media. I, I'm trying yeah. to actually, like, amplify both sides' way of... Of, of seeing this. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, hit her with eight rounds... And um, she died there in the apartment. On the scene, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, the but then, you know, all this information started coming out. So the information came out that, uh, you know, that this Kenneth Walker guy, uh, her previous boyfriend was a drug dealer and this guy was too. Yeah. Um, and that they, uh, you know, there was some kind of uh, involvement of this apartment in the drug distribution, whatever, um, and they them. pressured, uh, one of the witnesses into admitting that it's possible that the police announced themselves before they came in. Um, and, uh, and then on the other side of that, they, uh, they also discovered that, um, the person that they were looking for had been arrested earlier in the night somewhere else. Oh, wow. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, so it's, it's gone on and on, but what they've tried to do is they've tried to turn this far as I can tell, yeah. innocent woman into some kind of criminal to justify the activity. What they did. Yeah, yeah. to what happened. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, actually, before we came on tonight, and I don't know if you've heard it, but uh, I listened to, uh, I guess, her, or uh, Kenneth Walker or her attorney um, released uh, the 911 call that Kenneth Walker made. Oh, really? Um, after she was shot. Yeah. And it's very clear. Yeah. At first off, it was heartbreaking. Like, yeah. I, like I actually teared up listening to it. Yeah. Um, but this whole subject is hard for me. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, uh, but she uh, or he called nine one one after uh, Brianna Taylor was shot, um, and reported that somebody had broken into his house and shot his girlfriend. Yeah, and it's really clear that at that point he has no idea that it's police. Yeah, he doesn't even know who done it. He just knows that people broke in and started shooting. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, people are trying to justify, well, they had a good reason to go in there, et cetera, et cetera. It I'm doesn't sorry. matter. Well, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And I, I'm, I just want to point out a few things about that. Well, yeah. first, some big statistics. Okay. There are something like 60,000 SWAT raids a year Which is in this country. insane, by the way. There's That's, no reason for that. Yeah. Six zero thousand, sixty thousand yeah. SWAT raids a year. That's one hundred and sixty four SWAT raids a day. Well, in all this of, all of these little municipalities and cities mm -hmm. have these SWAT teams, and they're not going to have these SWAT teams and not use them. Yeah, well, exactly. They have to justify their exactly their taking of military weaponry. Exactly. <laughs> essentially, yeah. really. Um, and uh, so another uh, another important point on this: there were no drugs found in that apartment. Yep. Kenneth Walker was released. Yeah. Both from drug charges and from assaulting police officers. Yeah. He fired back at them, but they and realized they, that they couldn't make a case that wasn't that didn't come down to him defending himself. Exactly, because that's exactly what he was doing. All right. Um the uh you know, the witness that said that the police announced themselves <laughs> It was after pressure. Who knows what was really said? Like all the witnesses unanimously at the beginning said that the police did not announce themselves, um, yeah. that all they heard was was screaming and gunshots, essentially. Yeah. Um, and then later, one of the witnesses said that they uh, they heard the police announce themselves, which is probably we've, just under pressure. We've discussed this it. on the podcast, though. That's completely irrelevant as far as I'm concerned, because exactly. plenty of burglars can announce themselves as police. It doesn't mm -hmm. make them police. <laughs> right. A absolutely. So here's the, here's what you have to understand. And that's what I'm saying is that, you know, they're using all this extra information to justify what ended up happening. Yeah. Like even people that I would say are, you know, generally on our side and in, yeah. in terms of this, generally more libertarian about this and about, you know, uh, police abuse. Yeah. Um, have said, well, you know, uh, they they did knock, they did announce themselves, uh, they had a warrant, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. You know, all these things. And they did, you know, they were shot at and uh, and all this. Yeah. All right, so here's the thing. Somebody breaks into your house at 1 a.m. Yeah. You have a legally owned firearm. Are you going to wait and see? 
how yeah how how does that play out in your house? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Secondly, the warrant was looking for this guy. Yeah. Now the whole purpose of no knock warrants is that is is about drugs. It's about drugs to begin with. And yeah. the, the concern is that, you know, somebody, if you announce yourself, then they'll be able to get rid of the evidence before you come in, Yeah, which is all, which is also kind of BS. It's not like they can't look through the sewer system and so forth. Like well, check your pipes. Yeah. And um, not only that, like there's usually a lot of money involved in that. And whoever has all of that product don't want to flush it down the toilet if they don't have to. Right. Like, because well, there's repercussions for that too. And there's also no way to get rid of all the residue in that well, yeah. time period either. But and um, would, it's not like a dog can't sniff out where the drugs yeah. were um, because there's still something left. But the again, in this case, the warrant was looking for this guy. Yeah. Can't flush him down the toilet. Yeah, exactly. He's not going anywhere. There's yeah. no reason, no reason not whatsoever to execute a no-knock warrant at 1 a.m. looking for somebody. Yeah. Because you can't hide the somebody. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You wait for him to come out. If he's there, you wait. Well, that's, yeah, that's an alternative option. That's actually probably the best option. That, well, I mean, that's, there's, this to me is so unjustifiable in every way. And all of these, these no-knock raids like this, at least in my mind, there's just no justification for it because even if we're going to have drugs be illegal, which they are, mm -hmm. um, th it's just not worth it. There's too big of a likelihood of making a mistake mm -hmm. going into the wrong house because it happens all the time yeah. where they end up in the wrong place or something happens. And yeah. I'll tell you where, and I hadn't thought about this till recently, but where I really think that, the true blame for this needs to go mm -hmm. is on the judge that wrote the warrant. Oh, I agree. I agree. Because I mean that at, at the end of the day, he's, he's the gatekeeper, the judges. Yeah. So these judges that are writing these, um, no knock warrants and stuff like that, that's, that's where, that's where the focus needs to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's just what I think. I don't know. But. Well, and they, you also need to go back to, um, the fourth amendment. Yeah. Because there's also been justification from the police side saying, well, we know from experience that sometimes these drug dealers have uh, drugs delivered to the girlfriend's house and, you know, so on. Yeah. Um, but the, the Fourth Amendment protects you from uh, unreasonable search and seizures, and it sets out some pretty explicit requirements for a warrant. Yeah. Um, so it, it has to be executed, warrant uh, by oath or affirmation, specifically um, describing the objects or persons or objects to be seized and from where. Yeah. And the, you know, places or persons to be searched or something. How, I don't remember how, exactly how, how the wording is yeah. and my phone's way over there. So <laughs> I, I can't look yeah. it up right now. But, um, but all of those things have to be true for it to be a reasonable yeah. search and seizure. Um, so the, we, you know, the whole kind of general, we know from experience that sometimes blah, blah, blah. No, that is not That's, warrantable. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that does not justify a search warrant. Yeah. And it certainly yeah. doesn't justify a no knock raid at 1am. No. And I don't think that really anything does. I don't, I, I, unless, you know, there's like if legitimate, there's, somebody is in danger right at well, this moment. I was going to say like some kind of situation where. Where, you, where somebody's like taking a child or something like, mm -hmm. like those are really the only kind of situations where I can think where there's like you say, where there's like lives on the line. Yeah. Um, that's, I mean, that's, that's the only situation I see like mm -hmm. these drug chart the, going after drugs this way is not okay. Yeah. It, but the, it's just the, not. the life on the line being that the people in there might OD themselves if they're left to their own devices till the morning, that doesn't justify it. No, no, yeah. in no way. Yeah. I mean, I just, I, it's it. This is a one that really just gets my blood boiling mm -hmm. because it, it's it's something that's wrong with our society, and it needs to be fixed. And when the Black Lives Matter stuff started, mm -hmm. I was really hoping that's where it was going. Yeah, talk about talk yeah. about the police, but instead they made it about racism. Yeah, I mean, and I was really disheartened by it. Because, I was too. I mean, I was too. It, it was a a strong opportunity to talk about the militarization of the police to talk about the, the overbearing police state, um, that, and, and, you know, I was, uh, listening to Scott Horton talk with Matt Agarist from the free thought project about this. Yeah. And, um, and he was saying, you know, well, give me the example of where they, uh, where they were nice to the white guy in this kind of situation. Yeah. 
Like, there isn't one. And yeah. so I immediately thought about the Ryan Whitaker case, the one that I sent you a while back. Yeah. And this wasn't a, a warrant, and they did knock, absolutely, and announce themselves. Yeah. Um, and we've talked about this briefly on, and this actually leads to another part of this that makes it even worse, honestly. But, yeah. um, you know, we talked about this briefly on the podcast before, but this guy, uh, apparently there was a call in that they were making too much noise in this apartment. And the, um, the caller was trying to get the police to come out and they said, they asked him if it was, you know, domestic abuse or something like that, or if there was some kind of violence involved. And he said, I'll answer yes to any question that'll get people to come out here quicker. I mean, like he was, he was just trying to get people out there. Yeah. Yeah. And so the police came out and they knew it was a BS call and they even said so, like you have their, um, yeah, their body cams. Body cams yeah. um, they even said so while they were looking around for the apartment. Yeah. Um, and then they go and they knock on the apartment door and they announce themselves as Phoenix police, I think it was, um, yeah. and step to the side, uh, step to the side of the door so they can't be seen through the peephole. Yeah, yeah. And so the guy answers the door with a pistol in his hand. Yeah. Because again, this is like two or three in the morning. Yeah. Um, and somebody's knocking on his door and whether they announce themselves as, as police or not doesn't mean that they are. Now, yeah. if you can go look at the people and see the badge, then that's something different, yeah, right? Exactly. I mean, even that can be faked, but at least you'll have least more reason to believe you... that it's for real. Exactly. Um, but they, he goes to the peephole and he can't see anybody. Yeah. So he opens the door and he has a, a, a pistol in his hand behind his back and the, <coughs> the police are on either side of the door. And, um, so, and they immediately start yelling at him, uh, you know, because as soon as he sees them, he's like, oh, okay. And he, and he raises the gun, yeah, not pointed anywhere near them, actually pointed back into the apartment. Yeah. Um, and he, and, uh, they're yelling at him to, uh, to drop the gun or whatever. And he, he leans back into the apartment. To it sit seems, the gun down. Yeah, it seems very clear that he's, again, the gun isn't pointed anywhere near them. It's actually pointed away from them. And it looks like he's going to set the gun down on the ground. Yeah. And when he makes that move, he's about halfway through that move when the cop that's standing behind him shoots him. Yeah. And so, and here's the other part that is similar to the Breonna Taylor case, is that then they provide no care. Yeah. That's, Brianna Taylor. That was the thing about that that video because I remember when you sent me that. It was because the the girlfriend. God, man, I hate talking about this. Yeah. Um, yeah, the girlfriend is pleading with the police. Yeah, let me help him. Let yeah. me something. And they're like, "Don't touch him," and they keep him there. And you you get to listen to his death rattle. Yeah. You listen to the man die. Um, and it was the same case with Brianna Taylor. Like she could have been treated. She yeah. may not have survived, but the police wouldn't allow any care which is ridiculous they didn't call anybody um and in the ryan whitaker case they're like stepping over him to check in the apartment they never call yeah. ems and the guy dies right there in front of yeah. him right mm -hmm. there in front of his girlfriend yeah and they did nothing about it horrible man yeah um so. and then <laughs> yeah on a side note on that uh then you have biden talking about this just shows how ignorant this man is. Yeah. Um, Biden talking just recently about how, well, you know, instead of stepping up to lethal force, why don't they just shoot him in the leg? <laughs> yeah, that that because that's like you could that just goes. The man to watches show. too much TV. Yeah, he he doesn't know anything about about handling guns. Yeah, like as far as I'm concerned, because that was the one thing, the first thing that I learned when you when you start learning about handling fire, firearms is, <laughs> is the bullet doesn't always go where you want it to. <laughs> well, that well that and and you you always if you're gonna pull your gun, you got to mean it, and if you're gonna pull the trigger, you shoot the kill. Like you don't you you don't it's not it's not a microphone you're not mm -hmm. pulling it out to to silence a crowd or anything like that yeah like you're you're it, it's if you if you're pulling your gun you've got to be ready to do yeah because the other guy is because once you pull that gun if i pull my gun on you your life is on the line now and you're yeah. going to do whatever it takes to save your life mm -hmm. as you should yeah i mean that's that's just but it just goes to show how much he thinks things through, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I mean, if, if it's, <laughs> oh, yeah, just shoot him in the leg. like Yeah. Well, it, you know, so my father was chief firearms instructor for the FBI down here for a long time. Oh, yeah. And the way they teach law enforcement is that you shoot, you aim for the center of the biggest part of the body you can see. Yeah. There you go. 
I mean, yeah. I mean, no, no bones about it. I yeah. mean, that's that's what you, you don't you don't try and shoot them in the hand or shoot them in the leg. You shoot for the center of the biggest part of the body you can see. Exactly. Um, and uh, yeah, the idea that and so we've seen so many of these reports. So one of the kind of reckless endangerment thing, like cases that came up related to the Breonna Taylor thing, is that yeah. um, at least one bullet, I think more than one, uh, that was fired by the police entered a neighboring apartment. Yeah. Like through the wall into through a neighboring walls, apartment. Yeah. yeah. Um, and obviously if they were shooting at the guy that was shooting at them, but they accidentally hit the girl standing next to him eight times. Right. Um, and then of course we, uh, we covered that, um, that shootout on the interstate, um, down here a while oh, back yeah, at the UPS that. truck or whatever. Yeah. And the, like they shot. <laughs> the police are hiding behind vehicles with people in them. Well, yeah, and that too. And they hit somebody randomly out there and they fired 30 something rounds and only a few of them hit the person they were shooting at. Yeah. Um, like police are apparently not <laughs> the greatest <laughs> shots. Apparently they're stormtroopers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so the whole thing on this is, is it's so backwards. Like, the person that was defending themselves were Brianna Taylor and Kenneth Walker yeah. when their apartment was invaded in the middle of the night by people with guns. Yeah. And that's the way you have to look at it. It doesn't matter that they were police. Yeah. Oh yeah. And it just, there's, there's no reason for us to attack drugs in this manner. Yeah, like more, more people are getting hurt by by no knock raids and stuff like that. I mean, mm-hmm. then people doing something. Vol- I mean, because it's. I mean, as you can look at it however you want. You can be against drugs if you want, but at the end of the day, the only person they're hurting is their self. Yeah. You know. I mean, it, it's just it is what it is. I just can't. I can't see justifying going after. <laughs> Mike's shaking his head at me. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. It is what it is. It's not a phrase that Mike is okay with. No. <laughs> It's it's just but, a meaningless phrase. Yeah. <laughs> it, it just fills space. It has no purpose at all. Yeah. Um, well, uh, is there anything else you want to say on that before no. I move on? Uh, so before we Do wrap we up, any? yeah. Um, I just want to hit a couple of things real briefly that just follow ups. Okay. Essentially, um, one is that when we were talking about uh, the the little bit of talk in the um, Trump Biden debate about, wait, no, is it in the Trump Biden debate? No, it was in the know. VP debate about the China trade war. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was the VP debate. Um, and uh, we were saying that, you know, she doesn't have enough economic knowledge to uh, explain why it was stupid to enter the a trade war in the first place. Yeah. Um, so there's been some questions that we made some assumptions about that. Oh, yeah. Which is, why was it stupid to enter the trade war in the first place? Oh. Okay, so... We should we should talk about this. Though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, explain that a little better. Um, so here's the main thing. Um, well, okay. So here's the practical thing, and then there's the philosophical thing. The practical thing is that China has much less use for our paper yeah. than we have for China's products. Yeah. In the end, the stuff is more valuable than the currency. Yeah. Oh, without question. Yeah. So even a, if it does come from China, <laughs> in a trade war with China, yeah. we're losing something more valuable than what they're losing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, absolutely. So that's the that's the practical reason why it's stupid. Yeah. Um, the philosophical reason why it's stupid um, is that free trade just lowers prices all the way around. Yeah. Uh, there are special interests that lose out because <laughs> China can provide products cheaper. Um, but the American consumer, which is everybody else, yeah. <laughs> gets a better deal. Wins. Yeah, absolutely. And it doesn't matter um, that they're undercutting us. And even if the their government is supporting, uh, the, is subsidizing these businesses to lower those prices. Doesn't stop the product from coming. It doesn't pro- stop the product from coming. And um, it'll hurt them in the long run. Yeah. yeah. Like they can't sustain I mean, that. Yeah. I mean, if you believe in capitalism, like mm-hmm. then you know that communism will eventually fail. Well, yeah. Well, even if you're, even if they're a capitalist society, if well, yeah, they're yeah. using public using, funds to to support these businesses so that they can keep their prices down, they're still eventually only it dries up. Self. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, and it doesn't affect us at all as far as taking the stuff. 
Yeah. Um, unless you buy into modern monetary theory and assume that there is no end to the amount of debt that you can go into. Yeah, but yeah, I feel like I feel like anybody that's buying into that one is rolling some big dice. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't prescribe to that. So. Yeah, um, go uh, listen to uh, oh gosh, now I can't think of the economist's name, um, the guy that does uh, Contra Krugman with uh, Tom Woods. Oh, um, Bob <sighs> Murphy. Bob, Bob Murphy. Yeah. Bob Murphy. Yeah. yeah. Go listen to Bob Murphy. I think he's pretty much destroyed modern monetary theory. But yeah. Um, Go listen well, for yourself. And the I, other, I think we have two, actually. But Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, the other big thing that Trump always talks about is the trade deficit. Mm -hmm. We have a trade deficit with China. Yeah. Well, you know who else has a trade deficit? I do with Walmart. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, I'm buying all this stuff from Walmart, and they're not buying anything mm -hmm. from me. Well, in the long term, that can be damaging, though, because it does signify um, a lack of production on our side. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but still, it's not as big yeah. a deal as he makes of it. Um, well, it's certainly is, not worth the thing a, is, though, a trade is it, war. If you're if you're producing stuff at a reasonable rate, it doesn't people they will buy it no matter what. So it doesn't matter if you're buying more stuff from China than than China's buying from you. Mm -hmm. If you're producing stuff and you're doing a good job and at a reasonable price, even yeah. if it's not China, somebody will buy it. Yeah. Well, and back to the original premise, uh, what they're sending over here is worth more than what we're sending over there. Yeah. Well, that's true because our <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah exactly our currency sucks <laughs> yeah um, but but that just goes back to the whole modern monetary thing where mm -hmm. we're just like we're just printing all this money and yeah I mean, in the end we would rather have the stuff than the money yeah yeah absolutely the stuff is more valuable yeah absolutely for some reason the money's more valuable to them right now but they'll learn <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. the other thing is the uh, um, the Navalny case, and I was saying that, um, you know, the, the theory was that it was really about the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, trying to put it into the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. Yeah. Well, Germany was going to go forward with the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, regardless of Navalny's poisoning. And so now, uh, the U S has expanded their sanctions, um, their economic sanctions that they had focused on Russia related to Nord Stream 2 yeah. um, and expanded them to anybody working on the pipeline, essentially. Really? Yeah. So uh, um, a, I th I'm pretty sure it was a Swiss company. It may have been Swedish, but I'm pretty sure it was a Swiss company. You know, Swiss, the, the king of neutral. Yeah. Um, wait, what was, the, what was the title in uh, Futurama? From the oh. neutral planet. What was the... Oh, oh. It doesn't matter. You know who I'm talking about. I though, do, but guys. I can't think of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, the, the uh, some at least a Swiss company, I think it was multiple, but it may have been just one, um, Swiss company withdrew from the, the project due to the sanctions that the U.S. was threatening on anybody involved. Yeah. Um, the sanctions are now affecting German, German companies too. Yeah. Um, as well as the Russian companies. Uh, they're not far from completion of this thing, and we're really like buckling down trying to prevent it from happening. Yeah. And we're doing all this under, you'll get a kick out of this ironic uh, <laughs> act title, yeah. um, Protecting Europe's Energy Security Act of 2019. <laughs> yeah. Now, think about this. We are going out of our way to stop <laughs> energy from entering Europe from Russia under the Protecting Europe's Energy Security Act. It's for your protection. Yes. <laughs> it's um, for your protection you're not getting this and, cheap energy. Yeah, exactly. And what this is is a pipeline from Russia that goes straight into Germany yeah. uh, to transport natural gas. Yeah. Um, now, of course, what the U.S. wants is for them to buy natural gas from our companies. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it's amazing how U.S. foreign policy overlaps with U.S. corporate in interests at this point. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, you know, you're talking about going out of your way to prevent. Now, the whole idea of the U.S. having a protecting Europe's energy security <laughs> yeah. um, act at all is just absurd because you're talking yeah. about us, a sovereign nation, trying to dictate to other sovereign nations what where they should get their energy from. Well, I mean, just think if Russia started telling us that we can't build a pipeline to Canada or to Mexico or right. something like that, like... How would we feel about that? Would yeah. we be okay? Well, they're looking out for our interests, so mm -hmm. we better do what they say. Yeah. And so you may have noticed that Navalny is no longer in the news, but that's because we've given up on that. Uh, and <laughs> that and we've moved on work, to something so. else. Yes. <laughs> um, 
So And so we're doing uh, something else to try and prevent a sovereign nation from providing energy that another sovereign nation wants to that nation. Incredible, man. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's it on our updates. Yeah. Um, but I, I just wanted to throw those in there. Yeah. Uh, cool. No, I don't really have anything else. The debates are tomorrow, Trump and Biden, one more time. Yeah. So Are they actually going to happen? Yeah, they're supposed to happen unless something changes between now and then, now right. and tomorrow. We'll that, have to see. We'll have to see how that goes. It yeah. should be interesting. Somebody told me that the um, these uh, social media companies were going to get it. I was like, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, wow. <laughs> um, and they, they enacted the mute button on these debates. Oh gosh. So yeah, there will be, there will be an option for them to, to turn off. I, it's supposed to be when they say two minutes uninterrupted, they're going to turn the other guy's mic off is what they say. Okay. So, which I, I, I put up a post yesterday. I think it would just be hilarious if Trump set his phone down on the podium and every time Joe Biden went to speak, he went to Twitter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's actually a brilliant plan. Dude, how? <laughs> he's he's going to live tweet the debate. Yeah, no joke, man. That would be hilarious. Yeah. And I don't put it past him. Like, yeah. I mean, I don't put it past him a bit. Yeah. So. Um, okay, uh, so announcements. Uh, we are now on YouTube. Woo! There's no Yay! real video. It's just a static image behind the audio. But I have the entire library up on YouTube now. The Liberty Mike is the channel, so that's a new place that you can go subscribe. That is very um, cool. So uh, now it's, um, you know, uh, like and share, uh, subscribe on iTunes, Podbean, and YouTube. YouTube. Um, For and, as long as they allow us to be there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I <laughs> I kept t- saying to people, like, if we get any kind of traction there, we're exactly the kind of uh, information that they shut down. So, exactly. Uh, you know, we'll see how this goes. Um but anyway, we're there for now. We are there. Yep. Yeah. I already have a couple of subscribers. Thank you to any of those people. <laughs> and um, yeah, so uh, like, share, subscribe, um, comments, reviews, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we like all that stuff. Um, you can always email me at Michael at the Liberty Mike. And um, I'd give you my email address, but I don't ever check it. <laughs> Yeah. So it would be a waste. I, I'll give it to you. It it's it's Larry at the Liberty Mike. Yeah. Um but you're right. He Yeah. It's, he, if you send it to me, it's it's you're wasting your time. Yeah, you're just throwing it out into the ether. It exactly. goes nowhere. Um and uh we'll be back when we can. Like things are there's a lot of Ooh, stuff going on. A lot of chaos um, in our lives. So um we'll you know, we'll, we do this as frequently as we can, essentially. Um, so we expect to be back sometime next week, uh, when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try and stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later.